All right, we are here in the clubhouse, visitors clubhouse, with Royals prospect and Northwest Arkansas pitcher John Lamb. John, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. So you just mentioned before we went on that this is going to be three consecutive rainouts. Yeah, day three. I mean, we have joked around. Is that good? Is that bad? I talk about that. I don't that. know. We're all talking about it in the clubhouse. We're we're trying to figure that out ourselves. I mean, we're we're excited to. I mean, we feel fresh, that's for sure, but at the same time, almost too fresh because we're, as pitchers, it's kind of screwing the rotation up. But well, right, because you're used to pitching every five days, and all of a sudden that becomes seven. Every eight, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, if we get bumped back today, then I'm on my ninth, and then yeah. it screws up bullpens, stuff like that. So Right. I mean, Talk about tough. staying sharp, because I'm looking here, you guys got some toys here. I don't know if you guys are going to play with that in the water or not, but, but talk about staying sharp. I mean, even on a five-day scale, or how do you stay sharp when it gets to be seven and eight? I mean, it's just the... the the 10 minutes of throwing you get every day as a pitcher, that's kind of where I would put my emphasis of trying to get the repeatability that a pitcher needs. And other than that, I mean, that's really it. As a pitcher, you only have 10 minutes to throw each day and take it seriously and take your uh, weight, weight training and uh, conditioning serious and everything else will just take care of itself on the field. Is it like going out and shooting jumpers or, you know, or going out and throwing a football? I mean, is it kind of just that you just get to that routine and you just want to be able to find a place where, you know, okay, it feels good, I can quit for the day? Uh, to, for some people, I think so. I think there's some players fight mental somewhat capabilities as much as on the field uh, physical capabilities. Uh -huh. So it's tough. I think at this level it's starting to control both, and that's where it gets hard. So. We're all in it to, to figure this out. So. Right. I like your story, or I think I do, but I want to talk to you about to more about it. Now, you came straight out of high school, but you got in, a, in an accident right before you were drafted. Talk about that, and is that why you slipped to the fifth, you think? Uh, you know, I, I, yeah, I got in a, an automobile accident. I don't even know if, if I would throw complete blame on it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. it was, what had happened was that we had an open campus uh, at my high school. Mm -hmm. uh, my senior year, obviously, I went off for lunch on our way back, or way back, mm -hmm. stopped at a red light, a fellow classmate from behind rear-ended me, I, he had said about 45 miles an hour, and I was completely wow. stopped, didn't think much about it, may have slapped my elbow up against the window or whatnot, but went out to baseball practice actually that day, because it wasn't really huge happen to the cars or nothing, right. um, and it didn't feel too too right, and let's just say that, uh, to say the least, the next day I got an x-ray, um, showed a little slight fracture, I was mm. casted for eight weeks, watched my high school team play Yeah. Um, my senior year, and that was pitching, pretty, pitching arm. Yeah, pitching arm, and that was tough, just watching the high school team, but I mean, it's, it's just part of dealing with some adversity, and it was cool, cool just to, to watch them have the success they had. So. Right. Um, but then, yeah, I, I later on got drafted by the Royals and couldn't wait to sign. Signed as soon as possible. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know if, if that has anything to do with me slipping to the fifth. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if anything saying that there was for sure me going any sooner than that mm -hmm. or later. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm pretty happy with where I was selected, especially not playing and uh, just given the opportunities I've been given, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. Were you nervous at all after coming back from injury? Had you been injured before? No, that's my first injury. Yeah. I'd, I'd always kind of my dad had taught me to listen to my arm, never really had arm problems or mm -hmm. injuries. Uh, I'd always been on the field as a position player or a pitcher. Mm. And, and it was tough dealing with that. And when I got back, I wouldn't say I struggled with, kind of trust in the fact that I was healed because it felt right and I trusted everything that I had done with the doctors in high school that I had seen that my dad had made sure I was in the right hands and then when the Royals I had obviously was in the right hands with them in, in yeah. Arizona so right. I everything healed up fine I feel fine still or still I should stay and everything's going good. Yeah, did teach, I mean, did basically, what did you learn out of that? Because you probably had to be patient and through the um, rehab. Did you learn by watching? Some people say that. Did you learn by watching other people pitch? Uh, I didn't learn as much as maybe you would think because it was just at a time where it was really just an exciting time mm. for me. I was really looking forward to my senior year, maybe winning a, a championship in, mm. in our division, I guess you would say. 
we didn't we didn't get to do that. I wouldn't say it was all because I wasn't on the field, but I would like to think I could have help, helped us out. But just the learning experience of, of being off the field and not being able to do anything about it, that was, that was somewhat, uh, I guess, humbling uh, because I, I know I, I guess I'm a pretty talented player, but when you can't really play and yeah. you're forced to watch, yeah. it, it, you, you'll start looking at things from a different perspective. So I think I... I saw that at an early age, and it may help me. It may not. I don't know. Um, but it, it was, it's working out. So that's right. Awesome. You seem like a very calm, mature guy. I mean, is, th is this kind of how your persona has always been, or is this something that's adapted as you've grown uh, up? I think just going through this process. Yeah. I think me signing and, and signing with the Royals has been the biggest thing and basically the best thing for me. I, I think going off... To college, I don't know if it would have mm. been a bad thing. I just think this was the right thing for me. I'd always said I wanted to play professional baseball, right? Major League Baseball, I should say, and that's the goal. And, and I'm getting closer and closer, so I, I think I'm at the right place. Definitely, John Lamb joining us here on the high road. So, talk about the repertoire. Bring us up to speed. What does everything look like right now? I uh, just fastball, changeup, curveball, and I'm just focusing on command of them. That's really it. That's yeah. all you can do. I feel like at this level, uh, you get caught up in statistics and I really believe statistics show a lot mm -hmm. about players but at the same time it, it's it's not showing everything I really need to work on a lot of things that behind the scenes if I go out there and throw a no hitter I mean it's I still a lot of things I can improve on so right but that's the type of perspective I've looked at it since being in this environment double a I would say mm -hmm. is watching TV watching major league pitchers the thing that they do is their consistency every night when they mm -hmm. get on that mound. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty pretty respectable, I have to admit. And it, I wouldn't say I'm there. I would like to think I'm getting closer and closer each day, but I do have things to work on. So Definitely. From the outside looking in, obviously a lot's been made about the Royals and their farm system and, you, and Baseball America saying you guys are number one. Everyone else basically agreeing with that assessment. Is there any added pressure on you guys? Do you guys feel any of that at all? And guys like me come in and do an interview with you guys and you, when you're in our town? I mean, do you guys think about that at all or has that affected you? As a player, I, I personally don't feel any extra pressure. I was... I was just talking to one of our other players, Salvador Perez, mm -hmm. and I, I'm i not throwing any bash on anybody right right here. I just, talking in the clubhouse about it, was kind of a little bit shocked that he wasn't on that list mm -hmm. uh, for the top 20 catchers, at least. And I'm not saying anything about the other 20 catchers on that list. Right. But I was just simply saying that, you know, us as players, it feels good to be on that list and, and whatnot. But still we're not accomplishing our true goal and that's where I think some people lose sight of, of what we're really trying to do here and that's as players we're all for the most part we have our heads on straight I think and, and at least in this organization for the most part we're all pretty goal oriented looking towards the major leagues and mm -hmm. that's it yeah I mean I think there's no doubt that some of us are struggling right now and there's a lot of guys that are succeeding just as well so that's part of the game, but at this level, we need to try to get consistent, and that's the process. So we're just trying to trust it and find out who we are. As Definitely. One thing I'm curious about, obviously, you know, pitching is pitching, but with having other guys like Dwyer, with Montgomery was here a little bit last year, does having other lefties help out more than having other righties, or is that just a myth? Uh, I, I, I believe so, absolutely. For one, it helps kind of dissect the other team's hitters mm -hmm. a little bit on mm -hmm. what they're hitting um, for one for two just kind of learning the game and how how left-handers pitch to other mm -hmm. other teams and and just that's one of the things that I'm I'm starting to pick up on or trying to pick up on and that's it's difficult to really learn the game yeah. at, at this level I would say but it's it's the only reason I say it's tough is because we're trying to focus on the field of, of what we're doing mm -hmm. at the same time focusing on the mental aspect as well so it's it's that's where I think we get a little into our binds I guess you would say or into right. our slumps because we're kind of mind screwing ourselves right and I, so, I, 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 I understand, I could say I understand. baseball America said something very flattering about you where Montgomery gets a lot of the publicity but they had you ranked a little higher and they said they liked your maturity they like that even if you don't have your best stuff that you're able to grind through would you agree with that assessment I mean I, I've 
I've heard that, always been told that, and you know, I, when I talk about, I guess, my outing, mm -hmm. I guess I would say with my dad for conversation after a game, mm -hmm. that's something that we would talk about. He would always make sure, you know, don't wear your emotions on your sleeves out there, and that's something I would agree that I've been pretty good at doing, but I mean, that's, we're all trying to get better at right. each thing we're doing, so I, I don't know. Yeah. That's for, <laughs> right. <laughs> Lastly, how much attention do you guys pay up at Kansas City? Are you guys excited about what's going on, or do you even get to pay attention to much of that? Yeah, I am very. I think we're all excited. We've seen. I've seen some of the success all across the board up there. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations, Theron Crow, and all the guys that have mm -hmm. finally gotten their chance to show what they've got up there. So I, I don't know. It's it's really cool to see the success up there. I'm, I'm glad to be considered a part of the future. Um, just as long as, or just as much as everybody else in this clubhouse. Right, so, right. That's really all I can say. About yeah. It. We're all excited. Have you given yourself a timetable? You're like, listen, I want to get there to, I want to get the big leagues at X amount of time. You know, it's it's tough because I started, at the beginning of the year, I started in big league camp thinking, mm -hmm. you know, this is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say I'm not thinking that I'm almost there, but at the same time, I just know what I have to do to be there and yeah. to stay there. And I might be over analyzing myself to a degree, but yeah. at the same time, that's just what I feel like you really have to do to be consistent at that level. So if I push myself too hard, that's fine. If I get a little bit less out of myself, but I'm going to be better than where I was. So True. that's just the way I'm looking at it. I don't know. That's. <laughs> right on. Well, John, thanks so much for the time, man. Really yeah. appreciate it. Good luck to you. No problem. Thank you.